Hey there, viewers, and welcome back to Bestie. Have you ever thought about the iron content in your body? It does help with blood production, but that doesn't mean the more the merrier. Hemochromatosis is a condition that develops if there's too much iron. Normally, the intestines are responsible for absorbing this mineral from the foods you eat, but in hemochromatosis, it absorbs too much, and there's no way to get rid of it. Often hereditary, iron overload causes extreme fatigue, abdomen, and joint pain. Is there a way to tell your body is absorbing more iron than needed? <laughs> there sure is. Liver problems, general weakness, joint pain, we're talking all this and much more, so stay tuned to learn everything about iron overload. Signs and symptoms. Excessive accumulation of iron takes time, generally years. The symptoms become clearer between 40 to 60 years of age. The severity of symptoms vary depending on the organ affected. Some people may have undetected symptoms, while others may suffer from serious complications, including the risk of organ failure. Either way, it's important to know what hemochromatosis looks like and feels like. Number 1. Common Early Signs the common signs of early iron overload may seem similar to any other disease. In the case where it's hereditary, you may have joint inflammation focused in the small joints of the fingers, commonly known as arthritis. All this is accompanied with bouts of fatigue, weakness, and unintentional weight loss. Enlarged liver and spleen is another severe early sign. Additional symptoms occur depending on the organ affected, which include liver, pancreas, heart, and skin. If left untreated, this could lead to some serious health complications. Have you ever gone through any liver issues? What were the early signs? Share it with us in the comment section below. Number two, liver problems. The fact that too much iron is a hereditary disease should not be taken lightly. Liver abnormalities like enlarged or scarred liver are classic signs of hemochromatosis. These symptoms alone can potentially lead to other chronic diseases. The earlier stages of liver issues will cause abnormal functioning of the organ with the absence of any clinical signs. People who have hereditary iron overload problems will be more likely to develop liver cancer in the later stages of their lives. Number 3. Joint Pain this is one of the most common symptoms and a recurrent sign in most cases of iron overload. This is sort of a chronic, indolent pain sometimes accompanied with joint stiffness, bone enlargement, and almost no sign of inflammation. A few acute episodes of joint inflammation may occur in the wrists, knees, shoulders, and feet. These kinds of pain occur because too much iron is stored in the joints and other organs after absorption. It's always advisable to get yourself checked out in case of joint pain. Number 4. Darkening of Skin Too much iron is not only a problem for organs like the pancreas and heart, it also affects the largest organ on the body, the skin. Also referred to as bronzing, patches of darker skin is considered another classic symptom of hemochromatosis. This is due to increased skin pigmentation, or too much melanin, in the skin. Excessive skin pigmentation is also an advanced progression of a variety of diseases, but is most common with iron overload. Number 5. Heart Problems The symptoms of iron overload can be hereditary or developed. In some cases, people suffering from this underlying disease can remain asymptomatic. Unprecedented amount of iron deposits in the heart leads to heart disease. However, once these problems develop, there's a rapid depletion of overall health. The accumulation of iron over a certain amount leads to unexplained heart failure. This begins with irregular heartbeat or arrhythmia, which should be detected in its early stages, followed by preventative measures to nip the problem in the bud. Why is too much iron bad? Iron overload is the gradual buildup of iron because the body is unable to regulate healthy levels. For many, this is not a big deal, but when it's passed on as a genetic condition, it can cause some serious problems. With too much iron accumulation over time, it gets easier for the body to develop certain diseases. Here's why too much iron is bad for anyone. Number 1. Cancer Risk High iron content is directly linked to the risk of cancer. If this condition is hereditary, then you would be at a higher risk. This happens because too much iron is toxic to the cells and tissues. If left untreated for a long time, this will develop into a tumor. Sure, iron is crucial for smooth bodily functions, but too much of anything is not good. Number 2. Risk of Developing Infection Iron is a tricky element in humans. Too much or too little can cause problems. This happens for two reasons. First, some amount of iron is needed in the body to kill off harmful bacteria. Second, elevated iron levels cause growth in bacteria, leading to the risk of infection. Too much of it is the reason behind bacterial skin infections. This happens when the bacteria affects the lower skin layer. Number 3. Iron Toxicity 
Iron toxicity can occur gradually or suddenly. It's a condition where too much iron increases the number of free iron in the blood. Normally, very little free iron is present in the blood. A gradual increase will lead to chronic iron overload disorder. Some early signs of toxicity include nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain. People taking iron supplements should also keep track of their intake. Remember to always balance it out. Number 4. Diabetes Hemochromatosis leads to secondary diabetes, which is caused by an underlying disease. One of the main indicators is the natural bronzing of the skin. The main reason behind the development of diabetes is the storage of extra iron in the pancreas. This hinders the proper pumping of insulin in the blood, leading to a rise in blood glucose levels. If you notice any symptoms such as unintentional weight loss, blurred vision, and feeling more tired than usual, then you should get yourself checked for diabetes. Have you been diagnosed with diabetes? Looking for a good diet plan? Here are some superfoods for diabetics. Now back to the signs of too much iron and how it can be potentially harmful. Number 5. Heart Failure once iron overload has reached dangerous levels, without any medical help, it can lead to the dysfunction or toxicity of any organ. In the past, heart failure caused by iron overload was overlooked, but it has now become one of the reasons behind congestive heart failure. It's mainly deposited in the muscles, tissues, and bones, and this is where the heart comes into play. If not detected in the early stages, toxic iron overload will also lead to additional heart disease. Now that you know the symptoms and risks that come with too much iron, it's now time to look at treatment. Number 1. Therapeutic Phlebotomy this is a procedure that helps separate iron from the blood. It involves taking blood similar to a regular blood donation procedure. This will be done once or twice every week where blood will be removed in order to lower iron levels. This is one of the most fruitful ways of getting your iron levels back to normal. Number 2. Iron Chelation Treatment this therapy uses a special kind of medicine to improve your iron situation. This is a great way of lowering iron levels for people who cannot get their blood removed regularly. It involves an injection or swallowing medicine. It's one of the most convenient options for busy individuals, but it's also very important to keep an eye on the blood iron levels by getting regular blood tests done after this treatment. Number 3. Dietary Changes the first step would be to limit or completely eliminate iron supplements or foods that cause a spike in iron levels. Foods containing vitamin C should be avoided at all costs. This is because vitamin C helps the absorption of iron from food. Fish and shellfish are another thing that should be eliminated from your diet. Some fish contain bacteria that aggravate or cause infection in people suffering from elevated iron levels. Lastly, alcohol, the liver's arch nemesis, should be avoided at all costs. Number 4. Ongoing Care once diagnosed with iron overload, it's important for you to continue therapeutic treatments. Regular follow-ups with your doctor and notifying them of worsening or new symptoms will be the perfect route to take. Another ideal way of controlling it is to keep a log of your everyday iron consumption. Do not skip any medication either. If you do all this, then your iron troubles will be a thing of the past. Here are some foods you can eat to manage iron overload. Number 1. Fresh Fruit and Vegetables High antioxidant foods are the key to managing iron levels. Fresh fruit and vegetables are packed with natural, essential vitamins and minerals. It's not necessary for you to cut back on foods high in iron content. Reason being that leafy greens like spinach are high in easily absorbable iron, which is required by the body for normal functioning. Number 2. Grains and Legumes Grains and legumes are another healthy and nutrient-rich source of food. They contain certain substances that stop the absorption of iron in the body. A high-grain diet is not recommended for people who are at a high risk of developing mineral deficiency. However, people diagnosed with hemochromatosis can benefit from these food groups as it would maintain blood iron levels. Number 3. Eggs Eggs are rich in all sorts of nutrients, and they're packed with highly soluble iron. Other than that, the yolk also contains certain minerals that stop the body from absorbing more iron. When compared to soy protein, egg yolks work the best towards inhibition of iron absorption. It's an ideal choice for hemochromatosis patients. Number 4. Tea and Coffee both tea and coffee contain a substance called tannin, which has several health benefits. It works wonderfully towards stopping the body from absorbing more iron than required. All coffee and tea lovers should rejoice. The tannic acid present also inhibits proper absorption of iron from food. What does a healthy lifestyle mean for you? Which diet do you follow? Tell us all about it in the comments section below. Enjoyed this video? Hit like, share, and subscribe to Bestie. Wait, what kind of Bestie are we if we don't tell you about our other awesome videos? Go ahead, choose the left or right video and enjoy.